welcome back to part two. We're servicing a big 300 gallon fish only tank today. The irony about this tank is it was set up again as a fish only system. No lie rock. It was rock that we purchased from a uh, landscaping supply. Um, it worked out real well for us and the benefit for me is as a fish only system if I have to treat with medications I can comfortably do that and not have to worry about killing off some of the stuff that I purchased such as live rock to put into the tank. Well again the irony is that somebody in the tank has deposited um, through defecation most likely uh, sponge, living sponge, which is grown all over the rock. It's become a filter system as well as a food source all by itself. In addition to that the sand has become live, or live sand in this case, and what we're doing today is I need to go through and vacuum that, and that's what we're going to do now. So come on, let's get to work and stop yakking. So with a quick draw on the end of the hose, we can get the siphon started and use the vacuum attachment on the end of the hose to gently suck up that sand or fine gravel. And by using our other hand, we can regulate the flow leaving the tank itself or what I extract from the aquarium. This allows me to suck up not all of the gravel, but allow the debris to separate and rise first. And once I see that's been eliminated, I can then restrict the hose and allow the sand to fall back into the tank. This is an effective method of cleaning the tank because it gets debris directly out of the aquarium. So now with the water level down, it might be a little bit easier. You can see one of the returns right there in that corner. And the other return isn't really breaking the surface, but that's it there. This tank also has an internal overflow, and it also happens to be where the return from the filter pump comes back into the system. So water rises up, spills through the teeth in that overflow. There's a pre-filter inside there. We need to take that out and clean it. And that water in turn goes down to the wet dry trickle filter, which in turn is pumped back up to that return, which is a T with a series of knuckles on it. And as I mentioned, there's a circulation pump. There's a strainer right back there that sucks up that water down to the pump. Part of it actually goes to this chiller unit right here. And then that's returned into those two corner overflows or return lines. So I mentioned we have to clean that pre-filter. It's a little tricky to get into it. We have to take and slide the canopy forward so we can get to that overflow. So if you're not following me, the tank has an internal overflow, which is a box mounted on the inside of the aquarium. In this case, it's a three-sided or trapezoidal shaped box mounted on the middle on the back. Inside that internal overflow is what's called a pre-filter. It's basically a sponge that surrounds a standpipe. The water spilling into the overflow has to pass through the pre-filter to get to the standpipe, which is what leads down to the wet-dry trickle filter. Here you can see inside the internal overflow. Now in addition, the return line was inside that internal overflow. And here you can see how effective the pre-filter is at trapping the debris. Pre-filter does exactly what it implies. It pre-filters the water. The water before it goes down to the filter. So I got all this schmutz trapped in here. We need to just rinse this out. A pre-filter, or more appropriately called the mechanical filter, meaning it screens or traps out debris, can be in many different forms. There are some molded foam sponge versions. There are the dual layer spiral versions referred to as DLS to us old timers. And then there's this new spaghetti loosely woven uh, to a certain degree molded pre-filter. These easily rinse out and they, what determines their lifetime is the amount of debris that they'll actually not only trap but release because you can clean them as well as you want, but if they don't release the debris, 
they just become restricted that much sooner at quicker points. Also take note of the pore size or the particle size of the pre-filter media that it will trap out. Some filter medias are very fine and as a result will trap out very fine particles but also become restricted very quickly. Filter medias such as this will allow a slight amount of debris to pass through as you saw down in the bio balls. And that pre-filter slips over the standpipe, which is what secures into that fitting the bulkhead at the bottom of the overflow. So it ensures that 100% of the water leaving the overflow passes through the pre-filter. And with the cleaned or replacement pre-filter media slipped around the standpipe, we'll insert that in a little fitting at the bottom of the internal overflow that allows the standpipe to stand rigid and secure, thus ensuring 100% of the water passes through the pre-filter and doesn't go around it. I mentioned that there's a protein skimmer in this system. It's a Eurowreef brand protein skimmer. It does a really good job on this fish only system. We need to clean it though at least twice a week. This protein skimmer has a collection cup at the top of its neck. We need to unthread the collar to remove that collection cup. And it sure produces some stinky stuff. And what a protein skimmer does is through heavy aeration, it's able to drive uh, organic compounds, proteins, enzymes. Um, stuff from the water via that heavy aeration and the way it's designed it'll force it up into this little collection cup at the top. We need to take and clean this out and it's pretty easily done just by rinsing it out. The benefit of having a protein skimmer in the system, in particular this heavily loaded system, is it will lessen the amount of debris that the biological filter needs to deal with because through its heavy aeration it can drive out a lot of those organic compounds. Can't be afraid to get old mud on your hands though. Before the bacteria need to begin to break them down. Thus ultimately lessening the amount of waste created in the tank. Also in addition to the pre-filter We've got some filter pads lying on top of the drip plate across the top of the wet dry trickle filter just as an additional means of mechanically filtering the debris from the water. I'm going to go ahead and change those now. This is simply just polyester filter pad that you can purchase at any local tropical fish store. Typically it's the type that's designed to cut to fit your application. I'll just take and cut out a few squares out of this and place it across the top of the drip plate in the wet dry trickle filter. This will help capture some of the debris that the pre-filter in the overflow may have allowed to slip through. So we've cleaned up the system on this big 300 gallon tank. We've uh, cleaned the acrylic on the inside. We've cleaned the backside. We've removed the dirty corals. We've vacuumed the gravel, we've cleaned the pre-filter, changed the filter pads over the top of the wet-dry trickle filter, as well as dealt with the protein skimmer. It's now time to start putting that water back into the tank. And with big tanks come big jobs, and with big jobs are big water changes. In this case, 40 gallons. I've got to carry in here five gallon jug at a time. So let me get uh, some energy worked up and come on back for part three. We'll get the water back into the tank and then we can talk a little bit about the individual fish that are in here.